It's here on America's most hallowed ground that the sacrifice of so many for our country is most clear. And in this place, there aren't Republicans or Democrats, no red states or blue, conservatives or liberals. Here we truly are what we pledge, one nation under God. Throughout the history of the United States of America, we've been united. And that's what's made America, America. History is clear on this, that one of America's greatest sources of strength has been its unity. From the founding moments of our country in Philadelphia to the war President Lincoln waged to preserve the Union, the American people have proven that when united, this country can get through anything. We defeated the imperial ambitions of other countries, defeated fascism on two continents, and communism worldwide. Americans have together attempted great things and been together in triumph and tragedy. But no matter what, Americans stuck together and put politics aside. Through thick and thin, we were Americans first, last, and always. In times of challenge, Americans came together in common purpose and we trusted each other. It used to be Americans would anxiously await news from the front, and we never doubted we'd hear the truth that those delivering the news were truly on our side. It used to be the dream factories of Hollywood brought America together, lifted us up, and gave us heroes. It used to be America's political leaders were as united as America itself. It was Michigan's own Republican United States Senator from Grand Rapids, Arthur Vandenberg, who declared during World War II that politics stopped at the water's edge. So what would historians make of these times we're in, when few Americans trust the media to tell them the truth about the war on terror? And anchors won't even wear an American flag on their lapel, because that would be biased. What would historians make of Hollywood today, instead of bringing us together? It drives us apart. And what would historians think of today's Democratic Party? Their chairman says he hates us. Their leader in the Senate calls our president a loser and a liar. Another Democratic senator compares our troops to Nazis and the Gulag. And Michigan's Democratic governor, Jennifer Granholm, accuses a Republican state representative of treason for writing that Michigan's business taxes are too high. In a country at war, what would cause one of America's two great political parties to act this way? It's as if the Democratic Party has taken a complete vacation from responsibility. And you have to wonder, where are the responsible Democrats? Has Debbie Stabenow raised her voice against the hate-filled speeches of Howard Dean or the anti-American raving of Dick Durbin? The answer is no. Which national Democrats had the guts to tell Michael Moore to sit down, shut up, and stop undermining America in the war on terror? None of them. Name one Democrat elected official to call on our governor to take back her charges of treason against someone who spoke the truth, that our taxes are too high, you can't name one. It is clear to me that the Democratic Party, Howard Dean, Debbie Stabenow, Jennifer Granholm, all of them have proven that they care more about themselves, their jobs, and their power than they do about what's good for Michigan and America. History will judge them harshly, and so will the people of Michigan. In the face of all this, America moves forward, and so does the Republican Party. With strength and resolve in this generation's greatest challenge, the worldwide struggle against extremism and terrorism. With a strategy to keep America prosperous and strong. With bold ideas to protect the retirement security of every American. To make our tax code more fair. To ensure that no child is left behind. And to stimulate our economy creating more jobs for America and Michigan. Republican leaders will lead as they always have, with vision and purpose and decency, resolve. And no matter what challenge tomorrow brings, the Republican Party will do what it's always done. It will bring America together, this one nation, under God, indivisible.